Well, welcome back everybody to Hot Rod Guy Garage, and guess what we finally got? Our rings. So, in this video, we're going to put Project Free Trails motor back together. So, stick around with me. We'll see what we get into. And alright guys, I've already got one piston cleaned up and installed. Uh, one thing you want to do when putting new rings, especially on a turbo or supercharged application, you want to check your ring gaps. You want to use one of your old rings on your pistons. They usually like to pull the top ring off. And use our second ring to square the new ring up in the bore. That puts it a little further down. Ring measure clearance. The factory spec on these is 15 thousandths. And usually you open them up about 0.2 or more. Depending on how much boost you're going to run. So I have done check these. I'm pretty happy with specs. So I went ahead and put cylinder one piston together, got it back in there. And I use my own special little concoction of lube, put around the rings, which is not Marvel Mystery oil or transmission fluid. I like to lube everything up with that. So let's get to putting rings on the rest of the pistons and get them knocked in here. And anytime you're doing piston rings like this, you want to make sure your grooves don't have no carbon buildup or anything. You also want to make sure your piston has no marks around the outside diameter or any damage. These are in pretty good shape. So what we start off with, we start out with our oil control ring. And it's going to go on first. Like that. Then you get your oil expander rings right here. You're going to have one on the top and one on the bottom. I personally like to stagger these gaps 180 degrees apart. And you want to make sure when you do this you don't really stretch these rings out. You just want to kind of spiral them on the piston. Got our second compression ring. This one has a dot, so the dot always goes up. I'm just going to lightly spiral it around. You want to make sure when you put these rings in that they rotate freely in the groove and don't bind anywhere. Because if they bind, that's how you get gouged up cylinder walls. So we're good there. I'm going to step over here and get our upper compression ring. Four cylinder two. And these are actually marked. I don't know if you can see it right there, but it says top. So what I also do, I stagger the second compression ring 180 from the top oil ring. And then I'll stagger the upper compression ring 180 from the second compression ring. But just going to lightly spiral it on like that. Pretty simple. And at this point, this is where I'm going to lube my rings up. So I got my little special concoction of stuff right here. I'm just going to let it run around these rings. We'll hit these wrist pins a little bit. Since this thing was apart a little longer than what I wanted it to be. You just want to make sure everything's good and lubed. That way when you get your first start, everything's not this dry. So. Alright, we're ready to put it in. So let's get to that. You also notice I didn't clean the paint marker off. It's not going to hurt anything. So I got everything pretty much ready to go. Put a little engine oil on our bearing down here. Got our ring in our super crappy part store ring compressor that sometimes works and sometimes don't. So I'm just going to lightly tap this around the edge just to make sure it's seated. And we should be good to just... And if you get to a point like this, just want to make sure everything's kosher and you don't want to fight nothing. And it should go in easy. 
if you have to beat on this, you're going to break a ring. As you can tell, I was using a rubber rim handle, and I was just kind of lightly tapping about like that. Not really going to hurt anything that way. And when it stopped and wouldn't go, I made sure our ring compressor was still always seated. And we should be good, guys. So, at this point, I'm going to go under the car. I'm going to reinstall our rod cap. I'm going to lube up our bearing here. I'm going to get down there and I'm going to torque these as I go. The factory torque spec on these is 26 foot-pounds on the rod caps. So, that's what we're torquing them to. All right, guys. So, these rod caps actually have an arrow for direction. I know it's probably hard to see. The arrow goes forward and you don't drop it on the dirty floor like that. So, everything looks okay. So, rod cap's going to go up there like that. You have two nuts. These are 12 millimeters. I like to just run these down with my fingers and then finish off with torque wrench. Now, I won't go, let's say, whole hog on one bolt. I'll just kind of ease them both down in equal increments. Because 26 foot pounds is not a whole lot of torque. And you want to make sure you don't pull it past that point. But I like to go over them at least a couple of times here just to make sure everything's good and even and happy. So basically, guys, that's what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and throw this third piston in here. We'll see if we can get this oil pan stuff back on here today and uh, try to pre lube this motor a little bit and then we'll put the head and stuff on. All right, guys, get that third piston knocked in there. So a lot of y'all are probably wondering, what is that lube that I'm using piston rings? It's not just one thing, guys. It's some stuff that I've found to work pretty well over the years. Uh, using on just about everything that you just need to kind of lightly loop, you know, temporarily. Uh, something like rings, you don't want to use anything that's synthetic based on them, especially during the seat in period. So, that is a very small bottle. It's uh, about the double size of a baby food jar. I don't even know if baby food still comes in jars, but, you know, when I was little, it came in jars. So, it's about the size of a large baby food jar. It's about a quarter cup of Type F ATF, you know, quarter bottle. Quarter bottle of Marvel Mystery Oil. Quarter bottle of Assembly Lube, the red sticky stuff. And it's about another quarter of a bottle of this regular 1540 you know, non-synthetic motor oil. Uh, had good luck with it over the years. Not really snake oil type stuff. But this is something that I found out works well. And when you find stuff like that that works well over the years, you generally just stick to using it. You know, just a regular assembly lube or even just plain transmission fluid would probably be fine. Uh, even regular motor oil. I just got a way I do things, and that's what I use. I keep a bottle of it on the shelf over here four times when I had to put a motor together. Uh, didn't do anything any different than I did on my big block over there, or any other motor I've ever put together. Works pretty well. It's fairly thin, so you don't have to worry about it, you know, coking around the rings. But, you know... I figured it don't hurt, and if there's still a little dirt in there by whatever chance, even though I've cleaned it out a half a billion times, you know, it'll help just kind of drain it out. So, at this point, all three rod caps are torqued, all three pistons are in. So, at this point, we're ready for the oil pan. So, I've already cleaned the oil pan up. I fixed where I temporarily had an oil drain punched in it because I done that here in the driveway. 
I didn't pull the pan off. I just kind of done a quick, you know, kind of shoddy job. And that's what I've told y'all before. I throw stuff together for a video and then I go back later and I fix it. This is one of those cases where I, you know, I went back and fixed it. So I flip the camera around. I'll show you the pan. We'll get a little glue on that. We'll get it shoved up in the car. So basically this oil pan is rough. Now, this is the original oil pan to the car, and as you can see, it's kind of beat up on the bottom. I've had to weld some spots up in the base of it. I'll flip this around. You know, you can see the little spot welds in there and stuff, and that is not dirt in the bottom. It is a little bit of paint over spray. You can see where I've repaired the oil pan threads in there. And I've got our oil drain line it's welded fully in and sealed off. Now, I did coat this pan with some POR 15, and then I sprayed it with some little texture stuff and then just some chassis black to make it look a little nicer. Which don't really matter because nobody's ever gonna see it and it's kind of rough. So I'm gonna wipe the block off down there with a little brake cleaner on the tile. I'm gonna run me a beat RTV around our pan here and let's get that thing shoved on there. So I got our oil pan RTV on. Now a lot of y'all probably like, why well, didn't you use a gasket? Well, I've actually got a gasket sitting right here on the floor. Um, 89 through 94 cars did not use a gasket. Uh, at least one, none I've ever seen have. And the service manual does not mention one. So use some right stuff gray on the oil pan. Just a little small bead all the way around. Got that tightened up and in there. I pulled out our little oil restrictor up here at the head. I shot some uh, magic liquid down in the oil hole. Uh, just kind of, you know, make sure there's some lube down there still. Because this thing's been apart for over a week. I'm probably going to shoot some in the turbo feed line too, because that back feeds straight to your oil galleys. But at this point, we're pretty much ready to start getting ready to put the cylinder head back on. So our bottom ends together, oil pan's back on. Rings are in, rods are torqued. So, let's flip the camera around. We'll talk about the top end of the motor and what we're doing. And all right, guys, I'm at the point, like I said before, we're we'll ready to put the cylinder head on. So, I'm gonna flip the camera around and I'm gonna show you the head studs that I had bought for this motor. And we'll talk about them a little bit and I'll show you the head gasket. So, if you missed last video, you know that I have partially filled the block, top half of it. Also went to an ARP stud. Now these are 200,000 PSI stud. That's the literal force it takes to rip these things in half. So these, I got the part number off for them. I usually use a KA24 Nissan, which is a single overhead cam 2.4 liter like in your Nissan hard body trucks and your uh, 240SXs. So, I've seen this part number on a Geoforms. It's a 165-5401. These are actually main studs for a Saturn 1.9 liter. Best I can tell, they're the same as the KA stuff, except they're about 40 bucks cheaper. So, I figured I'd give them a try. I got them all screwed down there, finger tight. You want to make sure your head bowl holes are clean and you don't want to twist these things down in there or run them down with an impact. You just want them kind of fingers tied all the way to their bottom mountain holes. So that's like that. I decided not to put a good head gasket on it, guys. This is actually some kind of Fu Man shoe stuff that come with this cheap engine gasket set. I'm going to copper spray that thing and it's going to go on here. You may be asking why. Ultimately, guys, a lot of misinformation is going on about head gaskets on these cars. Now, while there is some jacked up oil hole stuff going on with some of these cheap gaskets, as you can see, I've drilled this one out. Uh, not a big deal. Use a step bit, use a knife, clean up the graphite around it. But a lot of people say that these uh, rings are just floating in here. That is not the case. This actually has a metal core. Just like you would see in, you know, your no blows and other stuff that are sold for these cars. 
a big head gasket gimmick going on with them. Um, nobody really makes a good MLS gasket or a copper gasket for them. And I would rather have a head gasket as a fuse than the rods or pistons. So I've always used cheaper head gaskets on stuff. I've never, ever had a problem. Uh, this blowing the head gasket was probably not the gasket's fault. It probably had a hot spot in the chamber or something like that going on. So, as a precaution, I filled the block. We put some head studs in it. And we'll see how long this head gasket lasts. Uh, I predict probably a very long time. And like I said before, I'd rather have as a fuse because these cars are not hard to pull the heads off of. Nor do a head gasket on. So, now we get to putting this thing on there. Wow, this new can of cover spray really kind of sprays funny. You know, it used to spray like a spray can. Kind of rattled out and, you know, laid down good. And it took a little bit to put a coat on the gasket. I'm not real happy with how this sprays, but it definitely coated the gasket good. So, let's flip. So, all right, guys, it put down quite a bit on there. And what I was saying about this not spraying is this is literally spraying out like a can of brake cleaner, which is fine. It's not going to hurt nothing. Uh, what I found with copper spray, if it does happen to lift the head and sit it back down, the copper spray will pretty much seal it off a time or two. So that's why I use it. This is cheap insurance. Well, per usual, guys, I don't have a tool in here to toss. I run through torquing head. I started off with 30 foot pounds, then 40, then 50. And the factory torque spec is about 54 foot pounds. Um, the ARP studs come with a spec of 60. So I pulled them 60. And I usually like to pull them just a hair more. And, you know, on turbo stuff, a little extra clamping force, as long as you don't plasticize the stud or bolt, it's not going to hurt. You know, I've done this a long time, and I generally go off feel, but I ease up in about two foot pound increments after I get past the spec. It's kind of go by feel. Well, eh, the only 12 point, uh, 12 millimeter socket I had, uh, yeah, she broke. So, at least I know the head's torque. So tomorrow, I'm going to grab my spare socket at the shop. I actually keep a drawer of spare stuff like this, but it's not here at the house. So that's going to be about it for this video, guys. So if you like this kind of stuff, make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, and most importantly, subscribe. Hope it kind of sheds some light on what's going on and how I put stuff together. Uh, generally, never have a problem, but, you know, sometimes you do, like broken tools. So, see you at the next one, guys. Thanks for watching.